Hey kids, it's time to get some SML podcast all up in that. What's up, everybody? This is the SML Podcast. I am your host, Joe. Joining as usual, Cole, how are you doing? I didn't die, so I guess I'm all right. So, That's it? A little gray. Yeah, a little, little bar, you know? A little bar, yeah. Like, it, I, don't, I don't ask for much. Am I still breathing? All right, let's roll. Good way to look at it. Also still breathing, our guests, uh, Jacob is here again. Jacob, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, yeah, you are. And then uh, our, our good buddy Doc Havoc, Ian, is here. Ian, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing absolutely fantabulous, aside from all the power outages that we're going on today. <laughs> Do you, like, work in radio or anything? Uh, No, but a lot of people tell me I should. Yeah, like, holy <laughs> shit, you have a, like, your voice is, like, smooth as butter. Like, shit, dude. <laughs> have you not hung out with him before? <laughs> Limited. Uh, I think the last time I saw Jesus was Magfest Eight. I think. That? Damn, man. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's what he's back. Yeah, my back hurts. That's how how old that was. <laughs> Joe, I've never known wow. you to have, to have a good back. That's yeah, very true. <laughs> very true. Very true. So, how's everyone doing? Uh, it's it's been a crazy week. A lot of a lot of news to talk about in the video game world. Should we dive into the news, or is there anything anyone wants to talk about before we get to news? No, there's a lot of news. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. Uh, the I guess the big quote unquote news was the uh, you know the whole reason we delayed our show until Friday this week was the the ID at Xbox showcase on Twitch today, which I watched two hours of and then went to sleep. <laughs> wow! On you missed purpose. An hour and a half, and I would arguably say the last hour and a half, like. The whole thing could have been the last twenty minutes of the of the showcase, and it would have been fine. Carnage saying he watched all three hours. Wow. Mm, oh yeah, I did. I not sure if I should congratulate him or offer my or... sincere condolences. <laughs> What'd you it say, was, Jacob? It was exhausting. I said, I guess today was a slow day, or it was. It, I just didn't think it was very engaging. They had community people doing like interviews with developers, and I thought the interview segments were. Honestly, I thought we'd do better. <laughs> and that's not it's saying true, a lot. Though. But like I, I remember I messaged Joe while we were watching it and I was like, they have people who don't play indies talking, talking about, about how indies excited they, they are to play these indies. Play. Yeah. And like, you know they don't give a fuck about them. <laughs> I'm sorry. The only one I've ever seen play indies at all was Trisha Hirschberger, and she does like a segment where she only plays fifteen minutes at a time. And she wow. does like twenty games just back to back. It's like a gong show type thing. And when the the gong goes off, she switches the game. And players in her chat or, or viewers in her chat can actually speed it up even more. Now where she plays even less of the game. What's and the it's like, friggin' point of only like, playing fifteen have, minutes of a game? There's so many of them, you're not even gonna like get to a fucking title card by that time. But oh, damn. So it, yeah, it, that's, it was that's why you don't give power to people with the attention span of a goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's frustrating because, you know, you want to see people who are just excited about you are talking about these games. And these they were so oblivious to like, any of the... Just the, any, the amount of fake forced smiles yeah. I saw from their hosts... And like, you could tell I, they were just winging it, like, oh, I can't wait to see more of that. I'm like, you won't even remember the name yeah, of that. You don't even know what the game goal. was. Honestly, uh-huh. I don't remember what was shown because I I was so checked out for most of it. The only thing that kept my interest was the Chris Charla interview because mm-hmm. he is an entertaining person to listen to. He was so excited. Love his heart. Yeah, he he seemed like the only one who was really excited. Like, the developers seemed like they were excited to be there, but none of the hosts seemed like they gave a shit. And yeah, we're just I, here for the paycheck. That's that's what it felt like to me. Wow, Joe, that sounds amazing. Ah. 
Well, that's, oh. well, that's fantastic. I can't wait to hear more about that. Um, here's a completely unrelated question that has nothing to do with what we were talking about because that's what's scripted next. Segways. Yeah. Do you know them? <laughs> no. And neither do we. The, the crazy thing is that for all of your forgetting with what was shown, I have an enormous list. <laughs> well, go, go through actually, the list. What are some of the highlights of, of what was shown? Um, so some of the new trailers that we saw that have not previously been seen, uh, Final Fantasy writers and artisan studios have come together for uh, Astria Ascending. Which is very, it looks RPG-ish. You could definitely see the Final Fantasy influence in it. The whole time I was watching the the trailer, I was like, yeah, that looks like a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> uh, so I see, I see where they were going with that one. Um, Lost Oasis is apparently out now. That was the only one that was like, ta da now! Um, but that one shadow dropped and, Nobody had any idea how to react to that. That actually looked super fucking cool, too. Like, there were these big giant mechs on stilts, and it looked wonderful. Um, I, I can give you some insight from the uh, the PC's perspective, since that's been out for a bit. Mm -hmm. But um, oh Well, the it's one of those games where it's like, it sounds like a fantastic concept on paper, but in execution, the gameplay, air quotes, loop, leaves mm -hmm. a bit to be desired because you can get together and you can create these really amazing um i'm, I'm not i, I don't want to call them steampunk but i can't really think of a better genre yeah. to evoke the imagery Dystopian but like you create like these punk. yeah you, you build these like these crazy contraption stilt walker type things of various different sizes and stuff and you can get together with other people and make really big ones like you know almost like walking sit well, i want to say walking cities but you can get pretty extravagant but the only downside is that it's just a very you know all, all that nifty mechanical stuff aside the gameplay at its core is basically like a, a loose sandbox survival sim with not a whole lot to do outside of surviving other than battling other players mm. so not like much other PvE. games yeah like i mean there is pve but like a lot of other um, craft-based survival sandboxes, things usually degenerate into very, very heavy PvP-oriented gameplay to the point where it's like, unless you have a lot of friends jumping in with you in on this, you're probably going to get face-rolled by like large clans, guilds, what have you. Yeah. And I don't want to call it like a griefing sim, but... You it's can definitely, <laughs> you can, yeah. It, I mean, like I don't, like I said, I don't want to shit on the game so much as the community it unintentionally fosters. Mm. So you and know, again, if, all games are going to have dick bags. Yeah, but it's so. you know, it's just you know, like I said, like I don't mean to shit on the game itself because honestly, like I was almost tempted to buy it because I thought it'd be cool to go in and just build like these cute little you know crab walking things and just you know rolling around and doing all sorts of goofy stuff. But then I kind of heard about how basically like super guilds form and they're out to like roll public servers and just totally conquer everything and destroy everything and you know yeah, watch the world burn in, type attitude. Yeah, that happens in pretty much any game with public servers like that. It, it's a, art. Yeah suffered from it a lot. Yeah. Um, then, uh, Valheim, like, regularly wipe servers because of that to yeah. prevent like, that from it, happening. Like, if you could, and, and if you could have your own private server, like, with friends and stuff, they're all on board and, you know, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you could have, like, an absolute blast. It's just one of those stay the hell away from the public open servers. No, well, Carnage is saying there is a free trial for game preview version. I think he said there's an hour trial. So if you just want to give it a go and see if it's worth the 30 bucks, you know, yeah. give it a free trial. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to dissuade people. I'm just kind of throwing out the caveat no. that don't be surprised if you run into you go into this bags. gorgeous world and then you're immediately ran the fuck down by like 40 <laughs> dudes in a walking city. <laughs> um, Beyond that, they also, I don't know how to pronounce this one. I'm going to do my best. There was a new trailer for a turn-based tactical RPG called Last, or Lost Eidolons? Eidolons? E-I-D-O-L-O-N-S. Eidolon. Yeah. So that one was announced. Um, my husband is super excited for the next one they showed off after that. It was Lawn, lawn Mowing Simulator oh, 2021. <laughs> 
How did I know? <laughs> Long simulator. Uh, it uh, for all intents and purposes, it looked really pretty. <laughs> But it's a lawn mowing sim. Um, the particle effects when you cut the grass <laughs> on the Series X is like, fucking amazing. Like it was <laughs> given all these super close ups of like the shiny chrome on the the mowers and stuff. And I was, <laughs> it, oh, they know they, what they're they making. It, yeah, they gave it like the racing simulator treatment, you know. And you're like, okay, I can laugh. Brought to you by the developers of Forza Horizon. <laughs> 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 it is being published by Curve Digital, so <laughs> that's that's what they had to give us today. <laughs> I feel if they intentionally jumped the shark like that, I would <laughs> totally be on board. <laughs> um, the next one after that was actually from Super Hot Presents. And it was called Loot River. Um, yeah, this one looked interesting. Yeah, this looked badass. And I am 100% on board for Loot River. Please don't ask me. It's, all I know is my notes, I put badass in parentheses. So <laughs> I don't remember anything else about it because it was a three and a half hour show when I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they also showed off um, Among Us getting a new map. I was expecting the new map to drop with the Xbox port, but it that does not seem to be the case. the The new map is sitting on March thirty first. Uh, my kids will be super fucking excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> it is their largest map to date. And it is because they plan on adding an update later that will allow for more players per game. Ooh. Currently, you can only have 10, and they are looking to expand on that. Um, there's also going to be new cosmetics. My kids are already like, oh, my God, a unicorn head. Oh, um, God. That one's going to be free, <laughs> but there will be some paid ones as well. As long as the unicorn head's free, right? Yeah, the unicorn the unicorn hat was free. Uh <laughs> Um, do you have notes? You want me to keep going? <laughs> I I don't have any notes from the show. I told you I went to bed. You took a nap. Yeah, I, <laughs> I literally nap, watched two hours of it and then I went to bed. And I think I bitched for the whole two hours at you and Carnage <laughs> about <Yeah>. the show. <laughs> I was I was just not impressed with this show at all. I think I think Microsoft has to do a whole lot better with their events in the future by getting people who are more invested in what they're doing. I will say this was a pretty standard event compared to other Twitch gaming events I had seen. No. Yeah. So like I this, mean, this wasn't supposed to be huge news bombs or anything. This was supposed to be an indie showcase and that's what it was. I know they showed the new drink box game. I'm super excited about that one. Uh huh. That one looked really good. I don't good. even remember which one was drink box. End of the world or oh uh, nobody nobody saves the world. Nobody saves the world. That's it. Um and that's yeah, that's a roguelike that looks super good. Death's door is one that they showed off and I'm excited for. Um that's new from Devolver Digital. And you actually play as a crow who is given a soul to reap that gets stolen from him. And oh. so he's on a mission to just murder fucking everything. It's like a isometric view twin stick shooter type. Where you're a little crow trying to go reap the souls. And the, I don't know. I was just like, I watched it and I just had my hands on my cheeks going, that's my shit. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds adorable. <laughs> it was so like adorably macabre and I love shit like that. So I was, I was on board for that one. Um, so that one was Death's Door. They showed another trailer for Second Extinction. Uh, I want to clarify. I was expecting to see a new trailer for Second Extinction. But this is the same trailer that released a month ago. Oh. So it was already out. It wasn't anything new. However, in, in, in case anybody missed it the first time. <laughs> yeah. However, there was an extra card attached to the end. And that had some important information. And that is that um, Second Extinction launches into Xbox Game Preview on April 28th. And it also launches into Game Pass on the same day. Yay. And that I'm fucking excited for. <laughs> and it was it was funny because I was texting Suda and I was like, 
oh, I need you to play this game with me. And I'm like sending them screenshots and I'm like, it's Left 4 Dead, but there's no zombies, there's dinosaurs. And I was like, you're really going to like it. It's going to be super good. And he replies back, okay, we'll try it, but you are biased towards dinosaurs and zombies. (laughs) (laughs) And he's, he's not wrong. Jacob, are you biased towards dinosaurs and zombies, too? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I mean, I'm more likely to buy this game now, or at least check it out, you know, be like, hey, Joe, can we get a review code for this movie? No. No, only yeah, you you, game you about think you're going to get it over Cole? Are you out yeah. of your fucking mind? You're going to have to just bite my big toe over this one, because this is my shit. I'm excited. I'm ready. It is three-player co-op, not four. Which is a little bit of a downside, but eh, we'll make. We it. could always request multiple codes, you know. You just still can't have just one. Like, you know, we'll take what yeah, they're Cole's they're willing to give us. Three. I'll take Cole's one. I'll give one Cole's. to Studo. I'll give one to Lightspeed. We'll play it together. You and your SOL. <laughs> I'm somehow like I'm say, 29th on the list. <laughs> I'm gonna say, is, isn't that the one? It's it's basically like like Killing Floor, but with dinosaurs. Yeah, and gotcha. Killing Floor was basically left for dead. Yeah. <laughs> I have like a whole laundry list of games where I'm like, it's Left 4 Dead, but with this. <laughs> yeah, and that's not and a bad thing. In, and that's why Studa is just like, I don't, you're biased. <laughs> Did I just drop out? No, you're no, still here. No, you're still unfortunately. Here. <laughs> huh. um, that was weird. Yeah, there were are. two other trailers after Second Extinction. I wrote down the names for the games, but I don't remember anything about them. <laughs> well, give the names. Oh, Very good, Cole. Um, one of the, I, I just zoned out at that point. I was like, second extinction in Game Pass. <laughs> and I'm then sure. I zoned out. The, the second two, or the next two I wrote down were We Are the Caretakers and Blaster Master Zero Three, whatever the fuck that is. Oh, Blaster Master's coming to Xbox? That's cool. Yeah, like, Wait, you guys are I, I, like I don't know what the fuck yeah, this I just, is. Yeah, I, I like how you're just like, oh, yeah, I don't know anything about this. Who cares? Just, we're all like, ooh, Blaster Master. Ooh. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Uh, we are the Caretakers, uh, sci-fi turn-based squad management RPG. Assemble arcane teams of protectors to defend your planet and the endangered wildlife you rely on. Unite the world against an extraterrestrial threat. Fight for our future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Blaster Master Zero Three, July twenty ninth. I didn't write down anything for We Are the Caretakers because I just zoned out. Um, they everybody was so excited and shouting at like how they couldn't wait for Stalker Two info, and they thought they were gonna like see a new trailer and shit. Uh, sucks to be you because literally they just had a guy talking at us, and he was like, "Uh, so we're still working on the game. We'll show you more when we're ready." I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, they showed some work in progress concept art for weapons, and then they showed off an NPC and how they could change his teeth, and that was all they had for Stalker Two. <laughs> wow! I, I don't know well, why it in, was there. In his defense, the fans have been screaming, yeah, for some teeth modifications. I guess for quite some time. <laughs> like he was very excited was... that he could change the teeth with a click yeah. of the button so yeah, he was that was, very that was one of the biggest up. negatives of um, the older games it, it, it was neat that they said that every character is unique because they have it's so easy for them to change out these different uh elements even just like clicking a, a simple checkbox is whether or not a tooth is there or missing or got a cap or crooked or or whatever like every single npc is going to be unique because of that um, so, you and know, unique. sounds like it should be a unique experience. <laughs> <laughs> um, they showed off some more of 12 minutes, not too much of it because it's a 12 minute loop and they'll tell the whole thing if they do that. So, um, the voice actors for the game are James McAvoy, Willem Dafoe, and Daisy Ridley. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Which I was not expecting for a game from a single developer. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Um, the Annapurna is interactive is throwing their weight around with that one, with the casting. Um, definitely some strings had to be pulled for that. No date on it still, just said coming out, quote, very, very soon. Um, which is not soon enough for me. He did say also that it was, even though it's a 12 minute loop that you experience in the game, it is, um, 
it is about 15 to 18 hours of gameplay. Wow. So. Nice. Color me surprised. Um, that's, I would have expected. I would have been like, okay, four or five, maybe, you know, but yeah, 15 to 18 hours. That's interesting. For uh, such, such a short loop that has yeah. so much content. I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with it. Annapurna also showed off Last Stop, which is a narrative sci fi adventure. Uh, some serious Freaky Friday vibes <laughs> where, um, basically two characters are body swapped and you have to like guide them through their days until they can figure out how to solve their issue. It looked really, really interesting. It's definitely something I would play. It's a little niche and not something that a lot of people are going to pick up, but I'd, I'd play it. No. <laughs> Um, but what else? There was the list of all the games that are going to launch day one into Game Pass. Yeah, there's like 20 games. It's on the Xbox website, like news.xbox.com. They have the full list of 20 of them, or more than 20, it might be. Mm -hmm. But god damn, there's just so much coming to Game Pass. Hey, are you ready? I got it right here. Let's go. You're doing the full list? Do it. Let's go. Uh, if I fuck up any of the names, I'm sorry. <laughs> Recom recompile recompile? Fuck, how do you say that? Recompile. Recompile. <laughs> Recompile. Recomp 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 First one off the gate, so damn strong, Cole. What Good the job. Fuck? <laughs> Can't use your words. The Wild at Heart, <laughs> Astria Ascending, Omno, She Dreams Elsewhere, Nobody Saves the World, Moonglow Bay, Dead Static Drive, Little Witch in the Woods, The Ascent, Art of Rally, Craftopia, Undungeon, Sable. Way to the Woods, Library of Ruina, Stalker 2, Backbone, Edge of Eternity, Hello Neighbor 2, Boyfriend Dungeon, Narita Boy, and Second Extinction, which they didn't include in the list. I don't know I'm why. sorry, that was called Boyfriend Dungeon? Boyfriend Dungeon. Yeah, from Kit Fox Games. <laughs> I've, I've been getting emails about that one for quite a while. It's cool that it's coming to Xbox. Let's take okay. a look at this. That Boyfriend sounds kind of uh, okay. I should make you play it, Jacob. Do it. <laughs> Why? Do it. <laughs> what, what is it? Don't Ruby worry, said no. they didn't understand three quarters of what I <laughs> you're like. You're like, don't worry about it, Jacob. Here you go. I did my best. <laughs> it's okay. You did your best and... No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I could have, like, cranked up the accent a little bit. I, w I did the best I could <laughs> to not crank up the accent. Well, what did you think of the show overall? Because obviously I wasn't a fan of it. And I didn't watch it all the way. So I missed the good stuff at the end, apparently. Yeah. The sad part for me is that it could, they could have just done a trailer dump video and it would have been way better than sitting there for three hours listening to people t who weren't interested in the games talk about them. Yeah. Um, I don't think that that does any help for selling a game, unfortunately. However, for the actual quantity and quality of the trailers. I was really impressed. There's a ton of games I'm looking forward to. It was kind of like I'm filling out my review wish list for the year. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen some more in-stone release dates. Yeah. Um, and I would have really preferred some like, oh, now you can play it on Game Pass right now. Because that's always super exciting, but they didn't do that and that's where we are. All right, anyone else have any thoughts on the show? Jacob, I was did you watch to... any of it? or No, I had the kids today. No. Although I would like to say this, uh, I tried looking up Boyfriend Dungeon, and instead I ended up with my virtual boyfriend talk chatbot, dating and first love story simulator, date or flirt in romantic chat, which is available on PC and mobile device. Thanks, Microsoft. We should get me a review code for that, Joe. Okay. <laughs> so, some other news. Uh, Bloomberg is reporting that there's a rumor of a new Switch model that's supposedly going to be releasing this year. It will supposedly feature a 7-inch OLED screen, better CPU, more memory, and a supposed $399 price tag. This is all rumor. I, I'd probably buy it. <laughs> Terrible. I mean, that's that's the one thing holding the Switch back, is it's just, it's weak. Yeah, true. The so. shame 
the shame of the Switch is that Nintendo is really good at making pretty games for their system, and nobody else is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, everything that comes out, and they go, and it's on Switch, and yeah, it runs like trash, unless it was already a mobile game to start with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's, well, that's the thing. Like, whenever someone, like, I'm I'm a PC guy myself, but sometimes people ask me, well, what's your, if you're going to get a console, which one would you get? Uh, and I'd probably have to say the Nintendo, because that's the only console that has games I do not have immediate access to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, some PlayStation games, too. Yeah, but. That's starting yeah. to go away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Sony's finally, like, you know, easing up the grip on their dick. <laughs> no. Uh, various reports are coming out stating that Microsoft, among some other possible companies, are looking at buying Discord for over $10 billion. Ugh. I'm sure everyone has opinions on this one. Please go public. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm really looking forward to that, because, you know, they, they, they've they operated Skype so fucking well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like, honestly, like, if they buy Discord, they're going to fuck it up, and they're going to somehow try to merge it with Skype and Teams, and it's going to be this incomprehensible mess that just slowly fucking dies. See, I don't think that would happen. I mean, like... Uh, Here's the thing. From from my understanding... They never tried to merge Skype with Teams. They left them individual things. Like, Skype's floundering is because Skype's devs don't fucking touch it. Well, they've also just bought them, but they could still do whatever they wanted to make the program better, and they just don't fucking do it. I... I don't know. I I don't really have a lot of faith in it, uh, just because I, I mean, uh, I have... We've had to use a bunch of these kind of programs with uh, my work, and it's just like somebody bu- buys out another one of them. Um, I mean, we've got... Uh, Salesforce is supposedly going to buy out Slack, and I'm just like, oh, fuck, like, <laughs> Slack sucks enough as it is, and it's just, like, Salesforce can't, like, nobody uses its social features at all, and I'm just, <sighs> no, stop, guys, just don't, please, don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what the hell you're talking about with any of that, so. Well, I, I stopped using Skype pretty much like around the time when Microsoft picked it up because Discord became way better. And the fact that after Microsoft picked it up, it continued to stagnate. That was one of the reasons why Discord became so incredibly popular and embraced by, you know, just the whole online social thing. And, oh man, it's, it's rough because. Let's see, because Microsoft is making a bid for it, but they were also having talks with um, Epic and Amazon about it, and everyone and no one, no one on any front is really commenting one way or the other, and it's like, ugh, because I, I don't know, it's it's like I well, there's also the option that they could put it on um, uh, the stock market. Yeah, put it, put it. Uh, I just completely brain farted on the term. Make um, it public. Yeah, make it public. There we go. And it's, and it's like, well, I honestly, if it had, like, as, as bad as it sounds of the three available, I don't know the most about Epic, so I don't know how they would handle it. Um, but between, like, Microsoft and Amazon, I, as bad as it sounds, I'd rather Microsoft have it. Cause, oh, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the devil that I know and I'm familiar with. Amazon, like, the idea of Amazon getting their hands on that shit, like, just straight up terrifies me. Yep. Hey, at least Google's not getting it, right? <laughs> God. So, so how's that Stadia thing working out? <laughs> how's any of their projects working out? Yeah, Speaking I actually forgot Stadia, that was a thing until you mentioned it on the show like a week or two back. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, Google tried doing that thing. <laughs> yeah, spe- speaking of Stadia, some other news. They just, this, annou- yeah. <laughs> just announced four titles will be releasing this summer on Stadia. <laughs> East 8, East 9, as well as Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 will all release on fucking Stadia, but NIS still won't release on Xbox. How fucked up is that? <sighs> oh my god, NIS, come on, throw us a goddamn bone. <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know, with, with that kind of attitude, I almost feel like asking, is it really worth having on Xbox? <laughs> I would love E8 on Xbox. I think that they should at least dip their toes in the water with E8. 
Yeah. Because East Origin released on Xbox, and from what I know, it did decently well enough. I've I've seen plenty of people playing it, so I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't. Yeah, know I, I feel like I, I I don't know. Every time someone mentions the Stadia or like a bit of news, like you just you know, I just I just think of the Mean Girls meme. It's like you know, stop trying to make Stadia happen. Stadia is <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, more rumors coming out saying that apparently the PS3, PSP, and PS Vita stores are going to be closed down this year. The reports state that the PSP and PS3 shutdown will happen July 2nd, with the Vita store closing down August 27th. After those dates, you will no longer be able to purchase content for those consoles. No word on how past purchases will be handled until official word from Sony comes out. But they haven't confirmed anything with this yet, so who knows what they're going to do. Wow, I didn't know the PSP and the Vita content was still available. I thought that stuff, like, shut down long ago. Yeah. Well, thankfully, yeah. Vita's, Vita's still kind of a recent console. I'm, I'm surprised that they're shutting the Vita store down. Like, yeah. I can understand the PS3, because that's two generations old now. I can understand the PSP, because I thought that was shut off already, too. Yeah. But the Vita, I'm... Uh, I don't, like... Vita, I, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I mean, just just from my own personal experience, like ni- as far as I can tell, Nintendo pretty much destroyed the handheld market with the Switch. Mm-hmm. Like even their own handheld things, like because, uh, like I remember I mentioned it to you, uh, uh the last Magfest we went to, like I'd usually bring my um my uh 3ds and I just passed, kind of sit- yeah. Yeah, and I just sit in a lobby and just rack up street passes. And then this la- you know, and then like it was like a year or two after the Switch came out, and like I wasn't getting shit. <laughs> yeah, no because, one had a 3DS anymore at Magfest. Yeah, no one, it was no one all had Switch. a 3DS anymore because they they're just bringing their, your, their portable Switch or a Switch portable. So yeah, I mean, it honestly doesn't surprise me that they'd be shutting down. But yeah, the PS3, that's ooh. yeah, yeah. I mean, I oh yeah, two generations. God, you know your old one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, pretty much for the same reasons that yeah, Ian just listed. I wasn't terribly surprised about the PSP and the Vita stuff. I mean, neither of them were huge successful uh, consoles anyway, or um, handhelds anyway. And it's just, I mean, with the news that uh, Sony's also shutting down its movie store, its online movie store, uh, as of like later this summer. I mean, it. <laughs> It really, to me, that like to me that was saying that we're really going to be getting out of our portable uh, entertainment and stuff like that. Because I don't know, I just the the idea of anyone like being like, oh yeah, I'm just going to buy movies through my Xbox or my PlayStation. Like it's still, I don't know. It, it, yeah. Well, it's that still it's, doesn't. Sorry. It's it, no, no, no. That's I, I didn't mean to really interrupt. But I mean, it's tricky because like the whole pandemic really boosted the ever living shit out of the streaming media platforms. Right. Um, but I mean, like before that, I mean, it's just like, I mean, if you remember with the PSP, I mean, they tried the UMD, oh, uh, yeah. that whole thing oh, with, the uh, UMD. with, uh, with movies and stuff like that. And like Sony <laughs> tried real fucking hard to make that a thing. And it like, it obviously didn't catch on. Yeah. Um, yeah. and it's I mean, just, can't blame them for trying. Right, but I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know, I, I like I still view, like, the movies on, like, the handhelds is, like, I don't know, it, like, I view it as, like, the portable entertainment, and so, like, for viewing movies on, like, a P- PS3 and a PS4 and stuff like that, like, I, I don't know, like, I just, I, 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 like, I never watched movies on, like, any of my consoles, uh, mm-hmm. unless I absolutely had to, um, and so it's just, like, to me, it was, like, I guess it's a really roundabout way of saying, like, you know, like, I kind of figured they were getting rid of all their portable content anyway. Um, yeah. The PS3, I'm not, I'm definitely not pleased about because, I mean, there's still plenty of that stuff that is playable. And, but I mean, I, I also don't like how Sony runs their, you know, their online store. I, I prefer like a more Microsoft approach to it where it's just like, you know, you bought it unless we're going to release a remastered version of it consider that you know to be it you know that's one and done you know whatever I mean, um, it's the same on playstation what do you mean you buy something and you own it yeah but i but you can't i sorry like with the backwards compatibility stuff oh. like that like that's what I, like that's what i mean um and so it's just 
I don't know. I just, yeah, a lot of gaming history is about to like get deep, deep sixed, and I'm not pleased with about that yeah. in fact. Well, that's the joys of of a digital future that mm-hmm. shit goes away eventually. I'm sorry that well, took me five minutes of rambling to get yeah, that I know. out there. You just it, went shut on the fuck up. and on. I know. Well, shut up, shut up, shut <laughs> up. Well, we, we can always hope that they kind of pull, like, the Disney strategy of, like, vaulting their games. So, like, they might pull it all, but, like, maybe sometime down the line they'll be like, hey, guess what we're bringing back for a limited time, uh, you know. Hopper, classic games from PS3. Uh, well, that's that's okay from Sony's perspective, but what about all the indies that may not exist anymore? Like there, right. there's going to be games that yeah. are just gone to the to the winds of time. Yeah, with developers like, actually, that don't exist. Can, there's already games that are gone to the winds of time. Ninja that's Gaiden about to get worse and, too, because there were people yeah. saying that um, it's possible if your CMOS battery dies in your PlayStation. That you can't access the games on it anymore. Yeah. Yay! Technology. Mm. Yay! And people wonder why I'm on PC all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's Robert. never compatibility issues with Pete. <laughs> Unless it involves Windows. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, some other news. Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, uh, Nocturne HD Remaster is going to be hitting Switch, PS4, and Steam May 25th. Uh, Jackbox Party Pack 8 has been confirmed to be coming out this fall sometime. Uh, MechWarriors 5 Mercenaries will be releasing May 27th on Xbox One Series X and S and PC. Uh, what other release news is there? Uh, Gotham Knights is now slated to release in 2022. Jacob, are you sad about that? I've got so much fucking backlog. I just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I've been reviewing so many games for this show that I'm just like, oh man, that Yakuza like a dragon. That, that's such a distant memory. I'll get to it <laughs> when my kids are in college. <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, oh, well, uh, some, shitty, <laughs> some shitty news. The FAQ page for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 from Activision states that there is no upgrade path for disc owners of the game on Xbox One, and they need to rebuy the game completely for Series X. I'm sorry, what? If you own the disc version <laughs> of the game... <laughs> no, I heard that, but I mean, like, that's just... Oh, my God. That's yeah. Activision for you. Yeah, it is. Jeez. Yeah, if you own the digital version of the game, you can upgrade for $10. Or if you bought the deluxe version or the cross-gen bundle, you're taken care of. You have both versions. But if you own the disc version for Xbox One, you are boned. And I think that is... That's some bullshit. That sucks. <laughs> that is... Activision. <sighs> because... Fuck them. Yeah. At least, you know, Nacon, they're pretty upfront with the fact that their releases are on separate platforms for Xbox One and Series X and S. They don't try to be like, oh, well, you can upgrade for, for digital, but you can't upgrade for physical. They're just like, no, they're separate. <laughs> Nacon, I am separate. fuck you. <laughs> Nacon, Nacon, give us your money twice. Uh, I mean, both- at least we appear- appreciate the transparency. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, both DLC packs for A Hat in Time will be releasing March 31st for Xbox and PlayStation. Seal the deal and Yakuza Metro will be $4.99 each. In addition, the game is getting a 60 frame per second boost for Series X and S and PS5. So if you've been waiting for the DLC for A Hat in Time, the wait is just about over. I can tell everyone's excited. I know I played Hat in Time and I I barely remember anything about it. (laughs) I don't it even know so what that is. so long ago. I haven't played it, but I've watched someone play it. It's it's a very cute game. Yeah. Jacob, some news on me. I'm sure that you are invested in a game preservation group called The Hidden Palace, released what they call Project Deluge, which is a huge batch of over 700 various prototypes and demo builds of PS2 games from various trade shows over the years. Oh, wow. Uh, what do you think of this, since you're big on preservation yeah uh i'm really excited about it uh i mean anytime that like we get to dig through like all these old builds and see like you know the parts that like could have been um like i I know one of the ones that got mentioned is uh lego star wars the video game which uh my oldest son and i are actually playing through right now 
um, on Xbox. But, you know, it's just, I, I'd be really, I'd be really interested to see, like, you know, if there's anything that they had originally made for it that just never made to the final cut, or, you know, if there were characters that weren't, uh, that didn't make it. I don't know. And it's just, the more you find out about this stuff, like, I don't know, the more interesting it becomes. Cause I'm always fascinated, like, with how video games are built. So, uh, I'm excited to, you know, check all this stuff out. I haven't had a chance to yet, but I, I had posted the news article to the Facebook page. And you didn't read it? You didn't deep dive into all 700 games? <laughs> no, not yet. No. You should have. There's a Guitar Man one. I, I found that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. If I had a PS2, I would download it and try it, but oh well. Sold that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you don't have a PS2? No, I sold it. Mercado. Oh. You whore. Yeah. Yeah, I am a whore. <laughs> yeah, it's about moving Whatever. forward. Whatever. <laughs> uh, let's see. Nexon has officially canceled development of Final Fantasy XI reboot for mobile, which I'm bummed about. I miss Final Fantasy XI. I, I'm sad that you can't play that on Xbox 360 anymore. You can't play it on PlayStation anymore. The only way to play it is on PC. I have tried like hell to get my account on there and it just it doesn't i can't get it their account setup was so fucking stupid with final fantasy 11 oh and like the don't, codes don't you even, had to register and don't, don't even get me started on that <laughs> <laughs> i've really wanted to like final fantasy 11 but like every step along the way was just an absolute nightmare <laughs> like even even trying to terminate my account just to make sure that it was inactive and they weren't going to be yoinking shit off my credit card was like a two day ordeal. Yeah, they their shit was bass backwards back in the day, and they didn't fix any of it. <laughs> nope. Oh man, yeah. I forgot that they made a video game based on the Shield. Jeez, did they? Yeah. Sorry, I'm going through the I'm going through the list of the prototypes and stuff like that right now. Uh, Xbox announced that gold will no longer be required for party chat and LFG services in addition to the free-to-play games that they announced already. The changes are in alpha testing now, so they should be coming soon. So nice. free, free-to-play time games no longer need gold. About damn well, time. you have to be in the you have to be in the alpha ring for yeah. right now. But free-to-play will no longer require gold. There you go. We don't we don't need to be issuing retractions because you total fib. Get off my dick. God damn. <laughs> anyway, last bit of news I have. Zen Studios announced Pinball FX, an all-new oh Pinball Hub for Legacy and new tables for Series X, PS5, Switch, and Epic Game Store. Uh, the bad news, first up, one-year exclusive on Epic Game Store on PC. Mm. And then uh. the, the best news of all, none of your purchases carry over. Yay. Yeah, those tables that you've been buying for Pinball FX, Pinball FX2, and Pinball FX3, Aww. they're all gone. You got to <laughs> start from scratch. Fuckers. Yeah. I'm, Get them I'm, on the show so we can yell at them. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty annoyed at that news. I don't, they said that they're going to look into ways to, to quote, soften the blow for people who had big libraries, but like I had like every table. And none of them carry over. Like, not even the recent Williams ones. That's like, what you on. get for supporting devs instead of just playing shit on Game Pass. <laughs> 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 Fuck you for supporting developers. <laughs> How dare you put your faith in humanity? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Dark Meek is saying it makes sense because they are moving from one engine to a completely different engine. They are moving to Unreal. So it, they are yeah. completely redoing everything. So there is a lot of work involved in it. It just, it is, it is yeah, it's such still a, a pretty, bummer. It's yeah, the, it's yeah, it's the news that you don't want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> like nothing and, carries over. Nothing. None. Like, you Zero know, with, without zilch. condoning or condemning, you understand. Yeah. Oh, hurts. I, hurts my I, testicles. I, I get that. I mean, I just, you know, I, I really wish that there was a way to, like, soften the blow for, like, you know, the because, I mean, I assume, like, some tables also aren't going to, like, make the jump uh, due to licensing issues and stuff like that. No. Um, but, I mean, it would be nice if, like, you know, the ones that they are 
are keeping the licenses for, like it would carry that over, you know, at least or something like that. That would be nice. But if, if they if they at least uh, find a way to discount the tables for previous owners, that would be one thing. Like half off tables if you already owned it. That would be a huge step in the right direction. But uh oh Carnage saying that Portal and Walking Dead are the only two that won't make the jump. Oh. Okay. That yeah, makes sense. But yeah, that's the news I have. Any any other news anyone else wanted to talk about? Well, I mean we're getting a ghost of uh T- Tashima, is that Tashima. How you it? yeah, uh, that they're going to be making a movie out of that, oh. uh, directed by the guy who dir- uh, also directed John Wick. Ooh, uh, Sony's going to be making that happen. Ooh, um, that's, that's going to gain a lot of attention. <laughs> yeah, um, we're getting a new Rocket League game that's going to be on mobile. Uh, Rocket League Sideswipe is a 2D mobile version of Rocket League that's going to be coming later this year to iOS and Android. I care so little about that. Cole, do you care? <laughs> Not at all. No, nothing. Uh, no, my kids might play it, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, we could at least, you know, we're at least saying we covered it. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, saying, like, Epic bought up Rocket League, they bought up Psyonix, the least they could do is something cool, and they're like, no, no, no. You guys get Llama Rama so that you get Fortnite shit in your Rocket League that you don't fucking want. And you get a mobile game that you don't fucking want. And nothing else. Yeah, we're, we're just here for the milking, not, yeah. you know, content progression or content development. Excuse me. Xbox Fireflex in chat saying, uh, not sure if it was covered yet, but Xbox Live is now known as Xbox Network. I... I am such a staunch believer that this is such a non-story that I had no intention yeah. of bringing it up this week, but I was it was brought up. I, I don't so yeah. way to be that guy. Use the term Xbox Live <laughs> anyway. It's the same just, as when people get tore up over the the one X one S series. That it's like everybody just says Xbox any fucking yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, how they, it's such confusing names. It's, it's a fucking Xbox. Everyone knows what the fucking <laughs> Xbox is. <laughs> there are not little old ladies going out buying $600 consoles for their grandkids and getting confused. Yeah. It's not a thing. <laughs> not in this economy. Oh, uh, Dark Meek is saying the Balan Wonder World news with the super seizure inducing oh, final boss fight. Yeah, I saw. That's- that's causing problems for people who don't have epilepsy as well. And I, yeah. I was concerned because if we got it, I was like, oh, I want to review it. Um, well, good but- news for you, Cole. We're not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. Uh, <laughs> problem solved. But, like, even beyond that, I kind of wanted to play it. And now I'm going, eh, I've had issues. I don't have epilepsy, but I've had issues from other games. Um, the messenger was one that fucked me up. Um, there was something else. I can't remember what it was. Um, but there's been a few that have, that have fucked me up and give me issues like headaches and nausea. And so I, Vale in Wonderworld is, I struck it. I was like, nope, I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Uh, he said she watched some of the video and had a seizure and didn't even get to the problematic part. God no, damn. I believe it. Yeah, it I was, saw the, the really bad. bad part at 1240 in the video, What? which if you watch the video and you have seizures, don't watch the video. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it it's pretty flashy and I don't know how they got away with it. Huh. It is. It's pretty, pretty flashy. Uh, yeah. Any I other news or should we move on to reviews? Well, uh, I, I found I yeah. found a little blurb. Uh, apparently. GameStop shares have, air quotes, soared by as much as 47% after a regulatory filing said that the company's board of directors was set for a major shakeup. Huh. Huh. Does that mean that Reggie's gone? No idea. But maybe it's, maybe it's something we'll have to keep an eye on. See if uh, GameStop is going to start cleaning house and maybe, God forbid, you know, not be the salt of the fucking earth (laughs) it's currently trading at 181 dollars i will say that they they made some changes to their store like last year 
they changed how their shelving was to to just put out the top so many games instead of what the store's actual stock was. And they recently changed it back to how it was. So yeah. that they're actually showing what the stores actually have in stock instead of a bunch of empty cases that you bring up mm. to the register and they're like, oh, we don't have that. Oh, well, then why is a case out? Because our store is fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the only yeah. thing I have bought from GameStop in the last five years is uh, this week I bought an Xbox Series X and an Xbox Series S from them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because that's where they were in stock and that's the only reason I did it. <laughs> they were in stock and I was like, well, give <laughs> and I will probably not buy anything else from GameStop for five more years. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know, honestly, I feel that if they get their shit together, clean out, you know, clean out all the assholes that have pretty much dug the shithole of a pit that they've been stuck in for like the last decade and a half. I think that they could really pull a solid turnaround. I mean, despite all the, you know, the digital shopping and media and everything like that. I mean, I still feel that if there was like a hard, you know, a store that sold hard copies and stuff like that, like I still feel that they could make a decent profit if they weren't absolute fucking shitlords about it. But fair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, quasi unrealistic, but, you know, baby steps. <laughs> I mean, if they could, if, if the board of directors is what's holding everything back, getting rid of them, you know, might go a bit, might go a long way. I maybe. don't know. Then again, maybe they'll get even worse. <laughs> What else did you have, Jacob? Uh, El Shaddai Ascension of the Metatron. Uh, they're considering a, or it's getting a, I don't know if it's a remaster or just a re-release on PC. Just a re-release um, on, on PC. Okay. Well, apparently if it does well enough, they will consider console release, which is great because you can't, like, it's hard as hell to get a copy of. And it's not backward compatible. Digitally. Yeah. So, so, fingers crossed on that one. Did we already talk about Back for Blood being delayed? No. Uh, well, it's being delayed till October. Mm. Oh, um, you sad? Yes, but also I'm I'm 100 percent okay with delays. I get yeah. sad because I have to wait, but I would rather a game be delayed than trash, <laughs> especially one that I'm that excited for. No, because I'm super fucking excited for Back for Blood. But I'm not surprised either. When I played the alpha, there was still like. I was very surprised that they were, we were playing the alpha in what was it, October or November? And, uh, I think, um, what, like seven months from that build to being released was, was already pretty rushed. So I'd rather, I'd rather, if they delayed it another year, I wouldn't be mad just as long as it came out eventually and was good. Yeah. Well, what else, Jacob? Uh, IDW has canceled another one of their licensed video game uh, board games. Bomberman has now also been canceled. No. Uh, we talked about that one, didn't we? No, we talked about Metal Gear Solid. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Metal Gear you're Solid lying got canceled. At. I didn't. I, I didn't know there was a Bomberman board game. So yeah, he's he's Where not I lying. Nell talked about this Tuesday. That Did I, I don't know. I didn't. I, you may have I, dreamed it. Fuck. Yeah. You dream about Purnell's you know silky smooth voice. Who doesn't? I, it's oh, fair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I track. That's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I've been hanging out around dudes so long. I'm going through delayed puberty. <laughs> <laughs> um. So going back to video game preservation, uh, uh, Tecmo has said that uh, with the upcoming Ninja Gaiden trilogy release. Uh, for Nintendo Switch, uh, the reason why Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1 and 2 are being used is because Ninja Gaiden Black and Ninja Gaiden 2, like, the code just isn't there anymore. It's gone. That's Bye. not just for Switch. That's for all platforms. Well, it's getting a... Okay, well, it... All right, so the article I had read was about the Nintendo Switch release. Oh, well, it's all version. For it. Okay, well, whatever. So, anyway. So, yeah. So, like... <laughs> The original code for those games is gone. Always Wait. good when the actual companies lose their own code. Yeah, I, I know it happened with uh, some of the Kingdom Hearts games, too, if I remember correctly. Probably. And last thing I got, did you guys know that Six Days in Fallujah was back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it got apparently it got announced back in February, and I was just like, oh, shit. Like, I only found out earlier this week. Wow. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. know. 
it's a it's a thing i'm hmm. curious how that's gonna play out uh yeah you know taking a documentary aspect of you know war crimes so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, so. I found- <laughs> all right I are found- you all ready for reviews <laughs> Yeah, I just found an interesting late breaking. Okay, what do you got, news. Ian? <laughs> uh, actually, earlier today, uh, Darby McDevitt, the narrative director for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, along with a lot of other games, has announced his departure from Ubisoft. Hmm. Yeah. Any given reason why? Uh, no, and that's kind of leading to a lot of interesting speculation. <laughs> but let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Assassin, let's see. He worked on Ask Creed 2 Discovery. He's a lead writer for Ask Creed Black Flag. Got tons of awards. And yeah, he's just like, you know what? I'm heading out. And I mean, he left it. It It's a uh, he didn't leave on like sour grapes or anything like that. He just there's a tweet that he put out. Let's see here. You know, it's today. 11.57 a.m. about noon. A special thanks to all the fans and content creators that have supported and expanded on our work over the years. Thank you for your kind attention. You have my deepest respect and admiration. It has been the honor of a lifetime to get to know so many of you. But yeah, he's he's moving on. Hmm. So yeah, he's he's left Ubisoft. Bring your pastures, pastures. Yeah. I know, but we got some games to talk about. We do have reviews we got to get to. Uh, <laughs> we're going to start things off with Dungeon Defenders Awakened, developed and published by Chromatic Games, released March 17th on Xbox One for $29.99. Dungeon Defenders Awakened is a co-op tower defense combined with epic action RPG combat. You're able to join forces with up to four players to take on a never-ending army of orcs, demons, and dragons. Are your defenses strong enough to save the world? Uh, Serlina wrote in a review of this one, and Jacob, you and I are going to talk about it as well, but this is what she's got to say. Uh, greetings, SML friends and fam. It's your girl, Serlina, and this week I'm reviewing Dungeon Defenders Awaken for Xbox One. Developed and published by Chromatic Games, Dungeon Defenders Awaken is a tower defense ARPG where you're able to control one of four heroes to make sure that baddies don't smash the wonderful crystals and unleash more evil upon the world. Let's get started with the review. The first thing you're going to notice about this game is that it is absolutely gorgeous. The colors are vibrant and lush. The maps are ridiculously detailed. All I wanted to do, all I wanted to do was explore each map just to see the level of detail that was put into them. The game is beautiful, no doubt about it. Each of the characters that you can play look great as well. You have access to the squire, the hunter, the monk, and the apprentice. All the characters look amazing. I played the squire predominantly and he's built so well, but he's cute. And there's humor in his costume because he has no pants, so he's running around in full armor with white boxers with hearts on them. (laughs) Nice. Uh, In addition to that, there's a bit of story as well. It's not just all ancient evils that must be destroyed, although that's essentially what it breaks down to. The beginning cinematic is quite lovely, and I was intrigued by it. Add in the adorable character models who are all chibi-fied, and you have a delicious-looking game. Unfortunately, this is where my praise must end. Uh Uh-oh. The game is slow and clunky, and I was definitely not feeling that. It's supposed to be tower defense, right? But I found it way more economical to just run up and kill the enemies without my defenses. I'm a squire, I can heal myself, time to slice and dice, and I enjoyed that. For me, my defenses were simply there to slow them down until I could get around to killing them. Okay, fine, I can deal with that. What I cannot deal with is how you pick up items in this game. You're supposed to pick them up by pressing the X button, except when I tried, they never picked up. Moving all around trying to pick up these damn items and it just wasn't working. Ugh, the more I spent time trying to pick up my item drops than I did setting up my defenses. As far as setting up the defenses goes, it's alright. There are some places where you can't set up defenses, like where the enemies spawn, which is fine. You have a defense meter, which limits the defenses you can set up. But again, since defenses didn't really matter to me, I didn't really care. Not the best feeling to have in a tower defense game. Dungeon Defenders Awaken is available right now on the Xbox One and other platforms for $29.99, and should you buy it, it's a solid try it for me, and I say that with a, with a lot of disappointment. It's a beautiful game, and I very much want to play this more, especially with my non-existent friends. <laughs> but those two points were so annoying for me that I don't want to go through the slog, and that's sad, because I do want to play more. Uh, Jacob, what are your thoughts on the game? Uh, I mean, pretty, pretty much I'm in agreement on all the pros. Uh, with that, um, I was playing it on the Xbox, uh, One S, and, uh, the game did crash on me a couple of times, which, I mean, whatever. I mean, it's, it's first week. Uh, like, you know, it happens. Uh, but hopefully that gets fixed. 
my my biggest gripe with it was the menus, which uh, to me they just felt needlessly complicated, and I had a lot of trouble. Like, I mean, I think this is actually the first time I've ever played any of the Dungeon Defenders games. Uh, does the series go back to Xbox 360? Yeah. Okay, I might have played it back then. Like, but if I did, I don't remember it like at all. Um, and so like, this is pretty, like, I'm considering this to be like my first, uh, entrance into it. Um, and it's just, yeah, it, it, it was, it felt fairly overwhelming, uh, to me as a newbie on this one. Yeah, so Carn- carnage in chat is saying it's a quite deep game and overwhelming at first. Uh, and it does have a learning curve to it. Carnage is huge on this game. He, he was praising it. Well, not praising it. He was excited for it before it ever came out. And he's been talking about it constantly. He's like, Hey, do you want to play today? Do you want to play today? And I swear I'm going to play with you, Carnage. I swear it's going to happen. Someday. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> One day. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he said that they did put out a patch, which fixed some of the crashing and some of the other issues. Uh, picking up items, I had an issue with that as well until I realized that it's like the, the tiny little mini dot at the center of the screen. You have to point that at the item to pick it up. It, it wasn't very intuitive. I, uh, there were a lot of times where I'm like, why can't I just pick up this goddamn item? Uh, I, I, I had, I had some similar. But uh, I don't know if I got into it nearly as much as you you guys did. I never even got around to doing any online multiplayer. Oh, that's because you're a bitch. Because, uh, well, we were, excuse me, you were like, oh, yeah, we're all going to get together. And then you don't. So, no, Carnage is totally right on that. Like, hey, Joe, are you going to do it? Oh, snap. Mm-hmm. When, when did you tell me you were ready to play, Jacob? <sighs> you never asked. <laughs> you never asked me, Joe. Just a piece of meat oh, to you. God. You must be at least this cool to party with Joe. <laughs> well, I can agree with Surly on a try. It. I think it's definitely a cool game. It is worth checking out. Uh, yeah. I think thirty bucks is is kind of steep. steep on it. I, I I would have been okay with twenty. Yeah, uh, but you know, I don't know what goes into the pricing of games, so I can't really comment on that. I just I I wish it were a little cheaper. I think thirty bucks is a little on the steep side, but overall, I would agree on a try it. Yeah. All right. Well, next up is Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe, developed by Freak Zone, published by Screenwave Media, released March 19th on Xbox One for $14.99. The Angry Video Game Nerd has been sucked into Game Land, and it's up to you to guide him through three terrible and treacherous retro game worlds. Uh, Jacob, tell us about your time with Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe. So, I... I know the, I mean, if you've ever watched the Angry Video Game Nerd series, I mean, the dude's been around forever. Uh, I don't know if he makes fun of modern games at this point, uh, but it's pretty much just him making fun of shitty retro games. Um, and of course, like, the high point for me was when uh, he started uh, making fun of the Power Glove. Uh, and just like how absolutely fucking useless that was. Yeah, um, he, yeah he, ha- he has done episodes based on, like, like all the really weird, oddly specific yet commercial failure peripherals that like every game system has tried to come out with since yeah. the dawn of video gaming. <laughs> yeah, and like the power glove thing was beautiful because uh if you had also watched his video on Top Gun, like uh he was never able to fucking land the plane, which I only managed to do that like once or twice myself. <laughs> um and uh, he, so he's doing his episode with the power glove, and he fucking lands it right on the first try. And he's just sta- like he's just staring at his TV in stunned silence. That he was finally able to land it with a shitty ass peripheral, uh, <laughs> like the o- like the only time it's ever actually worked for him for anything. <clears throat> um, also, I met him at Magfest Eight. Uh, believe it or not, he was at the uh, the hotel bar um, right not there in the lobby, and. Uh, yeah, I was like, I was palling around with some random people, and he was there at the bar, and like, we just like chatted him up for like 15 minutes. I bought him a drink. Uh, actually, a really chill dude uh, to talk video games with. Us. But so, <clears> how's anyway, his game? Movies. Anyway, <laughs> on to the game. So, what are we even talking about? Wait, Angry there's a game. game nerd. <laughs> yeah, dude. shut up, Cole. Go take your pills. I'm <laughs> anyway. or okay. <laughs> Be quiet, Grandma. Anyway, she's so, gonna hit you. She 
She is going <laughs> to hit you so hard. Good. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so in the game, uh, he's sitting there like, you know, palling around with his friends and they all get sucked into, uh, the video games and, uh, into, and they get turned into these like shitty video games that he has to now defeat. I don't, I don't know if you're actually freeing your friends or if you're just killing his friends. (laughs) It's really not that clear, but, uh, so each of the levels becomes, uh, a different is becomes based on a different video game series. Uh, so there's like a Castlevania level. There's a couple yes, of like there's Super Mario. Assholevania. <laughs> there's uh, right. Future <laughs> Fuckballs 2010, which is which is a uh, which is a Mega Man one. Yes, there's Dungeons and Dickholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, those were those were my favorites that I wrote down. <laughs> uh, and Assholevania favorite- is pretty great. My favorite was the one based on all the like shitty adult titles, um, which I was just I I really don't know what I went in there expecting, and it's just full of naked men dancing. There are men using their erect penises as pogo sticks and wow. jumping around. Uh, there's boobs everywhere. Like there's boob platforms where you have to like bounce on the boobs to like move to other places, and it's. <laughs> Oh this is a God. fucked up game and it's not for kids. <laughs> you should yeah, probably yeah. put that out there. Yeah, it, it is not for kids because I, I was expecting like, okay, well, my kids can't read, you know, whatever. Uh, thankfully, I didn't play this in front of them because there's blood and guts everywhere uh, because, like as you're blowing up uh, various stuff. And so you have to move through the various levels. Uh, you have to collect uh, NES cartridges. Uh, which spell out different stuff um, through each level, and they're hidden in various spots. Uh, and you have to avoid, you know, certain uh, certain stuff, like you know, the standard like spikes and cubes. There's also instant death blocks. Yeah, fuck those. Um, I hate those. <laughs> I hate them, uh, especially like since it took me. I think it was like I think I died like th- almost thirty times on the uh, on the assholevania uh, level. I uh, just because I'm fucking terrible at retro games. I'm terrible at all games, really. <laughs> but <laughs> um, so, anyways, uh, it's, so yeah, you're just going through all these levels, uh, and unfortunately, I before we got to review time, I didn't get to unlock the third game, so I don't know what it actually is. Yeah, there is a bonus third game. This is the the first and the second game combined together. You beat the both of them. It unlocks a bonus mini third game that completes the story, supposedly. Uh, I have not beaten it myself either. I'm still working my way through the second game. Uh, but it's for 15 bucks. I'm having fun with it. What do you think? Dude, it's totally worth it. <laughs> like, I mean, there's plenty of laughs to be had in it. Uh, but, you know, for making fun of like the shitty games of back in the day, uh, the gameplay is really solid and the mistakes and, almost all the mistakes that like I made that resulted in my death, uh, I felt were justified and stuff like that because like, you know, I forgot where the beam was, you know, where the beam actually shot out of, uh, or I for like, you know, I didn't time my jump just right, you know, for some of the spikes that pop up and stuff like that. Uh, so I never, I never actually got mad at the game itself, which is interesting because, you know, it's angry video game nerd. Um, if anything, I was just getting frustrated with my own, you know, ineptitude with it. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's totally worth it. I recommend it. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoy it too. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, that's it for you, Jacob. I guess we'll let you get going. Yay. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank God. I don't have to hear a fucking coal anymore. Jeez. Anymore. You two bickering at each other. Do you, do you have any final words? I do. I've oh, been no. blocked by a dev on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> as, as we all have. <laughs> oh, Gilson. Well, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, Cole, have you been blocked by Gilson? I don't know. Look him up. It's L- LGS Come underscore on, Cole. Productions. All the cool people LGS are being blocked by Gilson. Underscore Productions. Productions. I don't even use Twitter, and I've been blocked by Gilson. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, it, it I was... am not blocked, but <gasps> his tweets are protected, and I can't see them. Oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, yeah. The best part is I've blocked and I've never reviewed a single one of his games. Like I don't even, 
I don't even own anything beyond a PS2. It's probably because you do the tweets. Well, yeah, I know, but shut up. But still, I've been blocked by a dev, so, you know, I, I the moment I saw that, I was just like, huh, I made it. So, that's all I really got. Okay, go away. All right, bye. <laughs> nice talking to you, Jesus. Later. Uh, next game to talk about is Cartel Tycoon, developed by Moon Moose, published by Tiny Build, released March 18th on Steam Early Access for $24.99. Cartel Tycoon is a story-driven business sim inspired by the 80s narco trade. Expand and conquer, fight off rival cartels and evade the authorities, earn people's loyalty, and strive to overcome the doomed fate of a power-hungry drug lord. Uh, Cole and Ian, both of you played this one. Who wants to start? What? Uh, Ian's the guest. Guest? first <laughs> all right ian tell all us right. about your time with if cartel not. tycoon <laughs> um well let's see because it's well for starters i don't have a lot of experience in the in the tycoon genre so like a lot of things that i might have had issues with people who are you know used to that sort of thing might be better acclimated to figuring out but uh for the most part i don't i i kind of enjoyed it but there are some things that I kind of looked at in the more long run of the game that might crop up, but I'll kind of, I'll kind of get to that. And I'm sure Cole could probably help elaborate on that. But, um, there's a lot of interesting management involved that they handle really, uh, arguably well. Like there's a lot of nuance to it too that they kind of mentioned in passing. So you don't really consider it to be, uh, important until all of a sudden, things aren't working the way they should be and you have to try to figure out why and then it's like oh that little footnote from like the second tutorial tip like from two hours ago is suddenly becoming relevant again <laughs> but it's it's a sort of uh, it's a sort of sim where you're basically always doing something if you're just sitting there watching everything happen you're probably doing something wrong but uh, one of the interesting things about it is that uh, like for starters you have two sources of money. You have dirty money and clean money. And there are ways of laundering dirty <laughs> money into clean money. And they both function kind of sort of the same, but kind of sort of differently. It's really strange. Like, for example, you could pay all of your underlings with dirty money, but you have to manually transport it from your base to where they're located because it's dirty. You can't use conventional means of transfer service. And the funny thing is, is that if your your underlings are your lieutenants, don't get paid promptly they'll start stealing shit <laughs> <laughs> That's true. so you know it kind of makes sense you know once once you actually get your laundering set up you probably want to convert their paychecks to clean cash so they get you know paid on the dot um and usually things like and you can pay for buildings and upgrades and stuff with clean or dirty money but usually dirty money like it costs a little bit more um let's see here let me go over my bullet points the, the lieutenant system is also kind of interesting, uh, because every now and again, like once they, once they, they gain experience as they do various stuff and things for your organization. And once they level up, they base, you can either give them a, uh, cash raise or you can promote them in the organization. And there's like this big pyramid set up. But, you know, the funny thing is, is that there's only so many positions. And only so many people can fill them, but they still want to advance in some kind of way. So that is kind of like one of the juggling acts that you start getting into is that, you know, for example, like, hey, I want to get promoted. It's like, well, all those positions are filled, so we have to give you a cash promotion. You know, cut to like 15 minutes later. Hey, I want a promotion. Uh, well, we can't. We have to give you cash rates. And this kind of perpetually happens with, I'm trying to think of how many how many people you can have in your organization because it's like you have your capo to four seven because so i think you have like about maybe like 18 to 22 people total oh geez i'm uh, feel free to correct me cole I'm, I'm just trying to think off the top you, of my head you can have more i'm not sure what it actually maxes out at because i didn't do a whole lot of expansion yeah. it's, it's really hard and i play a lot of these games so <laughs> don't like hear me say it's a hard game and then be like well she just doesn't know what she's doing no i play a fuck ton of these simulators like this this is my bread and butter yeah. this and point and clicks <laughs> yeah um cartel tycoon has a, a really high um learning curve 
and it okay. it's so really it hard. Me. No, it's not just you. It's really oh, hard cool. to to get a hang of. I actually restarted my game around five different times because I would yeah. make some progress and then I would learn where I was fucking up and I would start again to, to yeah. get a clean slate and be better suited to make it a little further. And that's pretty standard for how I play um, these kind of simulators. I usually will like have a run where I just fuck shit up yeah. I mean, <laughs> and even, then go even at it the- again with what I learned. Yeah, even with the tutorials, you might have a few trial by fire restarts where you'll there's, be like, 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 you know, for example, um, like I'm used to like Stardew Valley kind of thing, like figure out what makes the most money for the, you know, for the least amount of time and then just go ham fucking wild with it. And I realized very yeah, soon. That. Yeah, you can't do that because it's like, OK, well, so let's see here. So like, we have an airfield the economy. And the more that you're like throwing things at a certain economy. You know, you can tank yeah. the value of whatever you're you're growing, yeah. or you can draw attention of the DEA and get raided and and have all kinds of issues. Yeah, well, um, like an, another thing is that like you're also limited by logistics. Like you only yeah. have so many transport vehicles, and I didn't realize this because when I first started, like there's a terrain filter where you can select different filters for different products to figure out where you can, like for example, certain areas might be more prone to growing. Stronger opium crops. Other that's, places that's might be very better for Tropico. By the way, if you have yeah. not played Tropico, it's very yeah. similar. And other, to that system. yeah, other locations might be really good for um, uh, weed and all that kind of thing. And other locations might be good for like meth chemicals or whatever. So, like, I found this really nice little patch, and I I plopped up like eight opium farms, and I put up a couple of warehouses, and all of a sudden, you know, like everything's backing up nothing's getting transported properly because you know everything's shutting down because i didn't have enough trucks to move all the product and all my warehouses are overflowing and like in this game you can lose product and money by overproduction Mm -hmm. but um yeah but getting on to something that cole mentioned like the whole terror system which is basically as you do more drug dealer like things you kind of raise the heat on your organization and one of the drawbacks is that every time you hit a certain benchmark, you activate a level of law enforcement that will start ramping up. It's, you know, kind of think of it like the, like the star system in Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. The only downside is that these do not go away ever. Like once they're activated, they are active and they could happen at any time. And early on, it's not quite so bad. Like, you know, like the DEA will investigate like, you know, like your airport. Or they'll investigate your um, like your your shipping dock, and basically you kind of have to shut them down because if the, if you're starting, you know, if they're there and you're loading in like you know forty keys of heroin, things are going to kind of get awkward. <laughs> but don't you know, mind so basically, me. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's not so bad. You shut it down for a little bit, yeah, whatever. Once they leave, if they don't find anything, turn it back on. You're fine. But the problem is, is that it, it really ramps up because let's see, because I even wrote it all down. Because let's see, one. Uh, DEA building investigations two police seizures. You will straight up lose product and have your shit shut down. Uh, the next one, the fed will seize multiple buildings and they can also grab your shit in the cities because you can build certain things in cities. Like the city is where you launder your money. The city is where you can, um, like bribe the mayor for favors and stuff like that. Uh, you can have multiple buildings to gain, um, not affection, uh, loyalty. To, with the people, so you're less likely to get, you know, the law crushed down on you. But, you know, it, it escalates even worse. You know, next, next one, National Army will blockade your cities and borders. Uh, after that, the CIA will straight up destroy your buildings. Oh, God. <laughs> Multiple True. buildings. And then the final one, the U.S. Army shows up and they will proactively hunt down your lieutenants. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. So with that in mind, um, like at first I like, I didn't really read the description of the game because I like kind of going into these things completely cold Turkey. And I, for a while I was kind of trying to figure out like, well, what's the end game here? Cause I played enough of the tutorial where basically, um, like it kind of stops teaching you stuff and it basically gets to a point where it's like, just go take over these territories because the whole game takes place on this, this little fictional country. And there's probably about like, like a dozen little, you know, subdivisions that you kind of have to go through. And, you know, just looking at it logistically, it's impossible 
to con- quote unquote conquer the country because you only have so many lieutenants and one of the mechanics behind the game is that you have to keep your lieutenants at certain locations or else they'll get taken over by rival gangs. And also, like we've already mentioned, you know, once you ramp up the law enforcement, those things never go away. You know, it's, it's almost like imagine playing, you know, GTA five with a perpetual five star wanted rating. Like you might be okay for a couple of minutes, but the moment one police sees you, bam, like shit's hitting the fan. So, you know, the game kind of turns into more of like a survival thing. It's not necessarily you're not out to be, you know, the quintessential Escobar of the area. You're basically just trying to see how long you can last in the face of, you know, perpetually uh, building adversity. Hmm. Cole, what are your thoughts? So, I mean, you can kind of cover all the major details <laughs> of the game. There's not a lot for me to dig back into there. Um, well, it's in, and, in, it's and in early already, access now for 25. Is, is yeah. this something that people should be investing in now? Uh, to, I don't have the, the early access page pulled up. Is it planned to go up in price? I am not certain. I did not look. That well, said, I think if you enjoy this kind of game and you want to have some kind of input to help mold the game, that would be that would be a good point to like, it's it's the the price is fine. I don't yeah. know if I would like ring yeah, it's, it's, bells if it goes up. <laughs> yeah, like right There's, right now, uh, special promotion offer ends April fifth, ten percent off. It's uh, available on Steam for twenty two forty nine. Yeah, US. Um, the map is huge. The game yeah. is huge. You're gonna sink your time into it to get your money's worth out of it. Yeah. My biggest concern is that learning curve. And even as somebody who plays a shit ton of these, just the amount of times I had to restart and, and practice and, and fuck up and fail and go back and do it all over again, that needs toned down some. Yeah. Um, yeah. There needs to be some means for getting that, that terror level dropped. And uh, it could be a little more explanatory. Like you can raise the, um, the trust of the civilians and like I had to full on go searching for a Reddit group to find out how to do that shit because it just yeah. doesn't help you out with a lot yeah, of cause, things. Cause, yeah. Cause the, yeah. Like, cause one of the problems is that like, no matter how safe you try to play it, like certain things will happen that will escalate that terror, whether you like it or not. Yeah. So, you know, it's not a matter of if, but when, yeah. mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I'm kind of in agreement with Cole. Like it's, it's a little tricky, but like, I think once you get the hang of it, you can have a lot of fun with it. And if you're into like a constantly ramping challenge, then this is definitely in your wheelhouse. Uh, also in a slight bit of defense, there's a lot of stuff that you see in the game that doesn't have functionality yet. Yeah. Mm. So, well, it is um, early access. So that yeah. is yeah. one of the, one of the perks. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, they're going to be working on it and maybe along the way they'll, you know, polish out, you know, now that a lot of people are playing it and they're getting a lot of solid feedback, they'll, they'll be able to polish a lot of the, you know, the difficulty ramping, the, you know, more, uh, comprehensive tutorial type stuff, you know, just work out, work, you know, buff that shit up. No. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. So I, I would say like if, if you're looking, if you're looking for this challenge and you're willing to, you know, if you're patient enough to try to figure it out, then definitely try it. Um, if you're kind of on the fence, I'd say, I'd say give it some time. Wait for the devs to, you know, do a little tweaking, a little, a little modifying here and there, you know, shape it up a little bit and see, see how it comes out. But not I necessarily would, worth rushing into this one. Maybe I would definitely say if you are new to these kind of simulators, then find something a little more beginner friendly. Yeah. But if you're already experienced and you're willing to, to, you know, suck it up and, and roll along with it as it gets ironed out, then you're, you're not going to be disappointed. Yeah. Cause this, this is the sort of thing where I can definitely see like a cascade effect. Like if you start losing mm-hmm. your cool and, you know, losing track of what needs to be done, they're just going to snowball the shit out of you <laughs> in, in the later stages. I got snowballed the shit out of. Yeah. Proud of like, you. Oh my God. What am I doing? Oh well, God, because I'm really bad to, to, to hit the fast forward button and forget I did it. Mm. And oh then, yeah. 
Yeah, and so then, like, it's moving at 3x speed, and and just shit's falling apart, and I'm like, I'm putting a form, you know. (laughs) Actually, two two things, two things to mention for closing off. Uh, One, that's a really interesting little feature that I didn't even notice until, because I I was, I streamed it for a little bit, and I took a break and came back. One thing that I noticed is that, like, when you pause the game, there's, like, an actual uh, media player controls for the music. So you can actually like, you know, customize, you know, you can actually fast forward the track that's playing in the background. And the OST is really, is pretty solid. It's nice. It's chill. It's thematic. It's good. And there's like an actual built in media player for it. Um, another thing, and I have no idea if they have any intention of doing this, but given the way, you know, things are in the way it's designed at the moment, I can see a lot of multiplayer potential for this. Uh, mm-hmm. like whether it's co-op or versus, I think. I mean, like I said, I have no idea you if they have any. You could kind of play versus, like, Risk style. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, like, I can, you know, with with a little bit of tweaking, I can definitely see that it would be a very, like, if you had, like, like, like four people playing on this map, I can see it being a very interesting game. Or even, like I said, if you, you know, co-opt in one cartel, that would make things a lot more interesting because you would actually have like another player helping out and you could probably branch out a lot more than you could in a, a single player environment. No. Cause like I said, you only have so many lieutenants and there's like easily two to three times as many locations that you need to babysit. Now, normally not- I'd have the, the store page up and see if they had any plans for multiplayer, but there's a cat on my lap and I can't pull up anything right now. <laughs> so we're just going to wrap okay. this up. 25 <laughs> bucks. It, it seems like it's, it's worth checking out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Ian. I guess that's it for you. We could let you get going, unless you mm-hmm. unless you want to stick around and make fun of Cole the rest of the show. Yeah, I'll stick around, and make fun of Cole. All right. I'm Next game to talk good. about is called Trader Life Simulator, developed and published by Muhammad Azwari. Uh, released February twenty second on Steam for nineteen ninety nine. Live your life as you like in Trader Life Simulator. Have fun building your own success story. Cole, is this easier than Cartel Tycoon? No. <laughs> I. W- <laughs> I looked at the Steam reviews for this game, and it was very positive. And I was like, cool, this is my shit, I should like this, we're good. Immediately I discovered that my controller does not work with the game. Mm. And that is number one issue, because arthritis is a bitch, and playing keyboard and mouse controls with my hands in the condition that they are, it doesn't work. Um, I was, if I plugged in my controller, I tried using it both Bluetooth and wireless, or, or, um, wired. Neither one worked. I could, I could move my character around. It is a first person game. Um, I could move my character, but I couldn't control the camera with the right thumbstick. So I was trying to like move the character with the left thumbstick on the controller and then use my mouse for the camera. It wasn't working. <laughs> I wasn't having it. Um, then I had to just break down and try to, to use the mouse and keyboard, which really limited how long I could spend trying to play the game. Let me tell you that they are not fucking around when they call this a simulator. You are in an empty house. You have very little money. <laughs> you have to get out and go into your little jalopy of a car and drive through the roads to actually get to your your store and, and stock it with the things. You have to shop for what you're going to put on the shelves. It's really creative and it looks moderately okay. I would not say it's the best graphics I've ever seen. There definitely feels like there's some asset store purchases going on here. That's okay. Um, it's, it's a little rough around the edges visually. My, again, though, my bigger issue is just that the controller didn't work, and so it's not particularly accessible. Um, for what I got to manage to play of the game, it's got a solid foundation. It's fun, and I can see why people were giving it good reviews and were enjoying it. I'm just sad I missed out on actually getting to play it like that for myself. No. And, and you know, again, it's an accessibility thing. But if I can only spend 15 or 20 minutes playing your game before my hand is starting to hurt, I'm not going to make a lot of progress in the week that I'm trying to review it in. Um, and, and 
you know, I'm sorry for that. I wish I, I wish I could be on here and be like, yeah, this was awesome. Um, the button control or the, the keyboard commands in the schemes, there's, there's not enough telling you what you need to do to interact with things. It's basically just like W A S D to move F to interact, move your cursor. Good luck. There's nothing for tutorial. <laughs> it's just figure it out as you go. Um, which makes, makes the fact that it was already an accessibility issue that much worse because then it's again, like we were talking about cartel tycoon being trial by fire. Yeah. I felt very much like it was trial by fire. Like if I fucked up with putting something where I wanted it to be, I just kind of would sit there and look at it and go, do I care enough to move it back? (laughs) Am I going to, you know, expend what little energy I have for my wrist on that? (laughs) <laughs> do, do I really care where the couch is? <laughs> um, so that was that was kind of a shame. Like I said, you get to decorate your your store, you get stock, you know, whatever you want, and and be a trader, and and it's great in that regard, even though it looks a little rough. But I wish it were more accessible. Well, it's a one man show, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. So maybe. That one, one person will hear me say that this is not accessible and the controller didn't work. And please fix it because I want to play more of your game. Well, as it stands for 20 bucks, what do you think of Trader Life Simulator? If you do not need a controller, then it's a buy. It's fun. It's fun. You can get lost in it as a simulator and just have fun. But if you have accessibility issues, then you may want to wait for it to be patched. So, fingers crossed, they they get some proper controller support. For good fingers crossed. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right, next up is Bladed Fury, developed by Next Studios, published by PM Studios, released March 24th, or March 25th, on Xbox One, Switch, and PS4 for $19.99. Bladed Fury is a classic 2D action game based on Chinese mythology with an accompanying traditional art style and sound design, but with a dash of surrealism added to the mix. Featuring a fluid combat experience, a high octane combo system, and a plethora of ancient <laughs> enemies and gods to destroy. Cole, they said your magic word. What do you think? I already like this game, and then they go and put my favorite word in the t- in the summary. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> um, Blade of Fury's art is based on on classic um, Chinese ink illustrations and paintings and it's fucking pretty um i do have one small complaint there is a lot of emphasis put on the boobs in this game um as far as all the characters with boobs go those boobs are front and center they defy gravity they defy logic they definitely mean for (laughs) you to look at the boobs there are some scenes where the the main female protagonist has her back to the camera, and yet you can still see her tits. <laughs> I don't understand this. Sounds like I just got back at the right time. What game are we talking about? Bladed Fury. Alrighty, I'll be right back. There are so many <laughs> confusing tit angles in this game, and I am certain that Every male that plays it is going to be like, fuck yeah. And I would be the one female who gets the game and just goes, why guys? Why? I didn't. It it doesn't add anything to the game. It just frustrates me because uh, anatomy doesn't work that way. Now, for the actual gameplay, 2D, some mild platforming, a whole lot of hack and slash. And I fucking love a good hack and slash. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> um, a whole lot of hack and slash action. I played it on casual. There are achievements for beating that shit on hard. We already know my stance on that. For the devs, if you listen to this, don't fucking do that. That's an accessibility thing. That's bad. Uh, <laughs> for um, but at least for the sake of casual playthrough, you can get all the other achievements. So I'm not not mad at that part. Um. Carnage says you can play on casual, but her tits are on hardcore. That is true. Womp, womp. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, everybody that's playing the game is on hard mode, except for me, who's sitting over here going. <sighs> <laughs> um, hey, you're talking about her boobs more than we are, though. 
That's because I'm the one who reviewed it. And I know that that's what you guys <laughs> care about. I'm I'm over here looking out for you. I'm trying to give yeah, you the Yeah, sure. Yeah. Blame us. I It does frustrate me. And, and you know why I'm harping on it? Because it's really the only bad thing in the game otherwise. Like, it was unnecessary because the rest of the game is so good and the gameplay does hold up. And the boss battles are awesome. If I had to bitch about anything else, it would be the standard, why do we not have chapter select after we beat the game? That is garbage pants. There should always be chapter select. I beat it. Let me go back and hack and slash at whoever I want to hack and slash at. There is a challenge mode, which is basically a boss rush. There is an achievement for beating it in eight minutes. I will never fucking get that. Fuck speed runs. Um... <laughs> There is, there's an achievement for beating a campaign in under two hours. I didn't know about that, and I beat the, the campaign in two hours and 20 minutes. Oh, uh, so close. And it was probably just because there were a few times where, like, I forgot to pause when I'd, like, go get a drink or something. <laughs> so I probably could have done it, and that makes me even madder. Um, so that's, that's even more frustrating. But, um... Yeah, it's, it's delightful hack and slash. The, the, the few puzzles there are, they're not anything that's like going to rack your brain. They're not going to hurt you. <laughs> you ain't here for the puzzles. Yeah, they're, they're you're here for I the know. hack and slash. <laughs> and the boobs. Yeah. Well, even, even the, the puzzles are a lot of just hacking and slashing. And I'm do you, okay. Do you, with do you actually it. use your boobs to solve any of the puzzles? No. Oh man, they're, all, they're such just, a missed opportunity. They're just for the male gaze. Um, yeah. You know, it I, is what it is. I I did I did look up the game and I mm -hmm. looked up you know like shots from the game. I I feel like there is an executive decision to have at least forty percent of her boobs showing at all time, regardless of mm -hmm. uh, angle or position. I told that's what I said. And, even when her back is to you, yeah. Somehow, at least forty percent of her cleavage is in the shot at all times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not just her. There are even like the other NPCs. If they yeah. are female, there are some busty ladies. Yeah, and, um, and I will I will commend the artist for being able to pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> no, because as an artist, I'm like, God damn it, anatomy doesn't work that way. Well, I'm sure they're well aware of that, but you're not the person that signs their checks. <laughs> 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 and I'm sure someone was probably like, uh, did, did someone tell the director that it, that's not how tits work? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, but do you want a job? <laughs> Touche. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I mean, if you, if you if you want to stand up for the cause, I mean, hey, go for it. I mean, it's just some fucking hash slash game. Just, just fucking draw the tip, okay, man? <laughs> <laughs> the actual game looks great. The the art, the environment art is so good. I really loved all of the um, the Chinese influence in, in it and the, the Sumi ink, and it was super well done. Um, hack and Slash, can't be mad at it. I will say I was a little frustrated that somehow I managed to play through the whole game, beat it, and I had all the upgrades but two. <laughs> oh. And I hate that shit. <laughs> all them but two. Two. Fucking two. Just two. What did I do wrong? I'm so sad. It was one for each tit. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't get the biggest cup size. Oh, Lord. Well, 20 bucks on Bladed Fury. What are you thinking about? I do think it's worth it. I had a great time with it. I just want chapter select. <laughs> That's all I could ask for in this world. All right. Cool. Well, uh, it's supposed to get Dark Mika in here, but she's not paying attention to chat, so I'm just going to try calling her and see what happens. See what <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm looking at this, this profile picture of the main uh, protagonist, and if I was to draw her spine... It would look like a question mark. Oh, and she Naruto runs. She Naruto, Naruto she runs. Does. I was like, why? <laughs> and then I stopped and I was like, well, she's probably top heavy. <laughs> it makes sense. I mean, I honestly, <laughs> if I was going to give anyone a free pass on a Naruto run, it'd probably be her. <laughs> because she'd have to counterweight those things somehow. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you know that you know the only way you're going to do that is by the throwing arms, arms out as hard as you can. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but like if you if you took this picture and just drew a line where her spine is, it would literally like no joke, no exaggeration, it would look like a question mark. <laughs> And you could figure oh, out exactly God. where her breasts would be sitting on that question mark. <laughs> so Aki's here. Aki, are you uh, excited that we're talking about boobs? Yes. <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit. <clears throat> of course. <laughs> so next game to talk about is called El Hijo, a Wild West tale developed by Honig Studios, published by Handy Games, released March 25th on Xbox One, Switch, and PS4 for 1999. This is an exciting spaghetti western stealth game in which you guide a six-year-old boy on his quest to find his mother. Aki, tell us about El Hijo. El Hijo, uh, uh, you you play as a kid. His father seems to have died, and his mom sends him off to a monastery to go in timeout. It, it doesn't really explain why she sends him off there, but he wants to get back to her, and she's a cop. Who doesn't use a real gun? Said she uses a slingshot, unlike literally every other cop in the entire game. And uh, you're just trying to get your way back to her, uh, and then you get embroiled in um, some sort of mess. She's out to catch the people who killed her husband, and well, at least I assume that's what it is. There's no dialogue in this entire game. So it's all just little tiny bits of cutscene and the actual levels to figure out what's going on with the story. And that's what I get as the gist of it. Um, occasionally you play as his mother. I think there's like two or three levels where you play as her. But most of the games, uh, 30 levels you play as him. Plus a tutorial level, so 31 total. <laughs> Um, he, uh, <laughs> oh god, no. Uh, root beer, bad. Um, the entire game is very much stealth based. You, you're playing as a little kid, and all the, the monastery people want to keep you in the monastery because obviously that's their job is to take care of you. And then, you know, you come across bandits who want to put you in child slavery to, work for them and then the cops want to shoot you for reasons that i can't comprehend you know hey that's life you're you're tiny and people have guns it's you know it sucks um so throughout the game you get equipment that you can use to try and distract people so you can get through the levels without hopefully being seen and if you are seen it's not immediately game a game over you can run away from people and hide um in later levels it gets harder because they have guns and if they shoot into the air or at your feet it, it automatically brings you to the previous checkpoint thankfully there's checkpoints out the fucking wazoo in this game um but there are in order to unlock all the art that you can unlock, you want to try and play through the entire game without getting caught. So no going back to the previous checkpoint, um, which can be kind of maddening sometimes, especially on some of the escape only levels where you're just running away because uh, they're usually done by other means than just your character running um, namely by like minecart and the like, and you can go off the tracks with that very easily, and it's just a pain in the ass. Um, but mostly it's just distracting people with, you know, by throwing rocks, eventually getting the slingshot and shooting the rocks away, uh, using little tinker toys, um, kind of like those clapping monkeys that, that you see in TV. It's kind of like that, except for it's, uh, a soldier guy and it walks. Mm. Um, fire fireworks things like that there's there's not too many items but there's there's a few uh just to get people to fuck off somewhere else so you can get around them um throughout the levels you can also inspire children which just is him teaching them to have fun with their life even though most of them are like chained up and stuff so he's like hey see i can balance this thing on my nose ha 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 you can do it too and that suddenly makes this kid who's being forced to work like 40 hours a week 
fucking just cooking stuff chained right next to the goddamn gigantic cauldron that makes his life so much more inspired and better because now he can waste time and probably get beat to shit uh by doing this trick yay oh lord (laughs) yeah it's just stuff like that like he teaches some of them he's like oh hey you can make sand angels which is just as silly as it sounds or hey i'll teach you how to how to juggle Instead of doing what you're supposed to do, which will likely get you beat. <laughs> but <laughs> hey, hey, it's it's fun. <laughs> My entire family was brutally murdered, but I can make a sand angel. Yay. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Wow, uh, way to look on the brighter side. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it, it appears throughout all of this, all these kids they don't have parents. <laughs> They're all orphans. So, yay! My parents are dead, but I can make a sand angel. You are correct. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> uh, the art style is really cute. Um, uh, they're, they're, oh, as I said, there's no dialogue, so it's you know a bit of music. I didn't really pay much attention to it because I don't pay attention to music. I was more focused on trying not to get seen for like the 50 billionth time. I did eventually beat the entire game without being caught in any level. It mm-hmm. took me so long to do, but it was Damn. so worth it. Yeah, it, it took me 25 hours, I think, to oh, 100% Ooh. the game. Um, yeah. So 25 hours, $20, 100%. What do you think of this one? Oh, yeah, totally. I, I totally love it. If, if you like stealth games, you're going to love this. If you hate stealth games... This is not going to change your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> Those but stealth I, fans I, have a lot to to look forward to. Yeah, cool. And, and if you're and if you're just getting into stealth, this might be a good one because it's it's hard but not punishing. Like every time you make a mistake, you know exactly what happened, and you can figure out how to get past it without too much trouble. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. All right, next up is Paradise Lost, developed by Polyamorous, published by All In Games, released March 24th on Xbox One, PS4, and PC for $14.99. It's winter, 1980. Simon, a boy raised in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, finds an abandoned Nazi bunker. Will he find what he's looking for, play Paradise Lost, and explore an underground world where Slavic mythology mixes with retro-futuristic technology? Discover the last story on Earth. Cole, tell us about Paradise Lost. Oh, thank God. (laughs) I was starting to freak out. I thought I was supposed to review that. I was like, wait, I don't remember that. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) No, this one's on me. Um, Although it is is essentially a a walking sim, so you probably would enjoy it as well. (laughs) Well, I I Um, have it to review for IGT here soon, so... (laughs) Well then, um, she's just gonna copy your review. Yeah, can we kick her off? Can I mute her? <laughs> <laughs> we don't plagiarize, Aki. We uh, don't plagiarize. <laughs> um, now I'm all fucked up because you made fun of my voice. So, You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yes, point for me. Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost. She's gonna Come slap on. you. Do I say it funny? I do, don't I? Son say everything bit. funny. That's your charm. No. Shit. Charm. Sure. <laughs> That's so your charm. I lost. <laughs> um, it does not take after the poem. I guess there's some elements of the poem that kind of sneak its way into the game. But basically it is a, a um, alternative history kind of walking simulator where you play as a 12-year-old named Simon... I'm going to pronounce the same Simon. I know that it's like Polish and it's like Zymon or something like that. It's S-Z-Y-M-O-N. Um, but in English, Anglicized, it's Simon. <laughs> and I'm redneck, so that's what you're going to get. Um, <laughs> so uh, you play as a, a 12-year-old boy and he is in this alternative history timeline where the the U.S. did not, uh, not just the U.S., but like the U.S. didn't drop the bomb on Japan that led to the ultimate 
um, conclusion of, of World War II. Instead, the Nazis were allowed to continue for a little longer, and eventually they developed their own bomb and dropped it on Europe. So, um, there is this just insanely detailed, harrowing world that strikes you in, in the most unusual of ways because it's very opulent. And when I, when I think of like Nazi insignia in a world, in a game world, I'm so used to seeing it destroyed and demolished and deteriorated um whereas in paradise lost it very much there are some areas that are a little more dilapidated but there are also areas where you can see it was in inha- inhabited by like nazi aristocracy and it's very opulent and proud and it's a little difficult to see that right um it it definitely kind of hit me emotionally and was horribly uncomfortable. There aren't any jump scares in the game. It's not I don't think it's even technically meant to be a horror game, but it's very uncomfortable. Um the the Nazi stuff aside, there's also some really well done um sound cues and and just audio atmosphere that, that weighs heavily and, and really brings across the starkness of just how lonely Simon is in this world. But the the story for all of its focus on on Simon's loneliness, there are elements too of where he's learning about his place in this world and, and how he, he came to even exist and and you know, I'm not talking like a birds and a beast talk, but like the Nazis did some really horrible shit and that comes through in, in the, um, in the collectibles that you'll find in the world that un- unveil the story. It's not for the faint of heart <laughs> at all. Um, I, I did think that the scenery and the environment and everything is top notch. It's, it's really incredible. It's really well done. It's even if it's kind of harrowing. Um, Simon's character and his model in that world don't always feel appropriate. Um, it is first person, but you can look down like in most first person games and like see a part of Simon's body, correct? So you can see like his shoes, his coat, and things like that. There's a lot of scenes where the lighting and just the general atmosphere of the room is not reflected on Simon's character model at all. So <laughs> he'll like his coat is is over um overexposed and it'll have snow on it and you're like, I've been inside for hours wandering around <laughs> this building. I haven't seen snow in three chapters. <laughs> um so it's a it's a little odd when when that happens and it's also noticeable like when his hand reaches out for things. It's not always, it doesn't always feel like it's in the environment so much as like it's o- overlaying the environment. Um, that's really my only major complaint. Minor gripe. There's always got to be at least one. This one pertains to the achievements. And guess what? There's no goddamn chapter select. <laughs> uh... Why are we doing this? <laughs> Why are you uh... going to have? Multiple endings with I, at least eight different ways that you get in the game that I can think of off the top of my head. And no chapter select. Once that final scene plays out, your save gets erased. So you can't even like reload your checkpoint if you hit that, if you hit that, um, if you hit that cutscene. It's just Gee, that, that cutscene erased. Weird. <laughs> To add insult to injury, mm. listen, I know he's a 12-year-old kid. He walks slow as shit. <laughs> I'm disabled and use a cane and I walk faster than that. So that's a problem. Especially because, like, a 12-year-old can fucking run. <laughs> yeah, 12-year-olds and have energy. You can you can hold the left trigger button. He, like, takes two exasperated steps. And he's like, <gasps> and you're like, what? <laughs> Come on, break out the inhaler, kid, and get a move on. 
<laughs> I know you've been living in a bunker your whole life, but what? <laughs> Uh, bitch, I see, I saw you pick up a rotor in the first chapter. Don't, don't play me. You can move. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's frustrating. I wish that, that there were options for, you know, increased, uh, movement. And n- otherwise, if, if you moved at a little more of an advanced pace, it probably wouldn't take five hours to beat the game. <laughs> um, the, the only other thing beyond that. <laughs> There are some settings you can, you can adjust, um, your camera sensitivity and things like that, but you cannot turn off the head bob. Mm. And ah, I hate head bob. I, it's been a while since I've had a game fuck my stomach like that. And I <laughs> think maybe it was because I was just tired when I was playing because I was playing late at night. And I was just like, okay, between that head bob and the slow movement, I was getting this horrible headache and getting really nauseous. And I was like, I'm going to bed. I will finish it tomorrow. <laughs> um, well, those minor gripes aside, 15 bucks on this one. What are you thinking about Paradise Lost? I do think even with the minor gripes, I think it's a really good game. I one k it. It's doable. I had a good time with it. I So I thought the story was really well done. Um, and, and I enjoyed the themes in it. So yeah, I'm good giving it a buy it. I just wish they'd do a little more polish. Cool. Yeah. All right. Next up is Clea 2, developed and published by Invert Mouse, released March 25th on Xbox One, Switch, and PC for $14.99. Four years have passed since the Whitlock Mansion tragedy. Florine, a former maid, is determined to resurrect the person who means everything to her. To succeed, she must travel past the third dimension and into the realms beyond Otherworldly horrors lie in wait, but Florian is determined to soldier on. Aki, tell us about Clea 2. Uh, Clea 2, ironically, doesn't have Clea in it, but for like 20 seconds, maybe. <laughs> Clea was the little girl in the first game, uh, and they named the series after her. This game, she just barely shows up in it. Instead, you play as uh, Florine, the... Uh, made that fucked everything up in the first game. Uh, in the first game, she released all the monsters, which are is what Cleo tried to run away from, um, and also killed Cleo's entire family and all the other maids in the entire house, because wow. good maids are hard to come by. Uh, and now she's working for a new family, because I guess they don't need references or anything. <laughs> I don't think I don't think she'd get a good reference from Clea. Just to, just a guess. Um, it, it's very much like the first Clea. Uh, you walk around and try to be sneaky to avoid monstrous people um, because you have no weapons. So if they see you, they'll run after you. And if you can't find a hidey hide hole, then uh, they're going to you know kill the shit out of you. So Yay. yeah. Yeah, it's real fun. Um, and, and just like the first first game, you also have multiple modes you can play the game in. There's you know the standard one to which there's four different difficulties. The light mode, which gives you infinite uh, saves. The dark mode, which is effectively normal. And then you have chaos and chaos plus, which are both extremely difficult games. Uh, if you play them properly, I refuse to. Um, and then you can tweak all of them to give you infinite saves on all of them. Uh, in light mode, you can get one-ups, which I don't know exactly what they do because I've never bothered to play with them. Uh, you can turn enemies invisible in any of the modes, and you can also play any of the modes in an arcade mode, which requires you to stay near enemies without them seeing you, obviously, so you can build up points so you can collect coins, and after you collect a certain amount of coins, you can continue through the level, um, which is the, probably the hardest mode in the game, actually. <laughs> um, every time you beat the game, you can get different outfits based on what you did, and I assume they all have abilities. The only one I know is if you beat the game 
with all the enemies being invisible, you get an invisibility cloak for yourself effectively, and the enemies can never see you or grab you or anything, so you can just walk through the entire game easy as piss. It's fantastic. Uh, there's three endings to the game, um, and to get two of them, you have to do some side mission stuff, more or less, uh, and collect some baubles effectively. Um, and one of the endings is obviously always there, since if you don't collect the baubles, you still need a way to fucking finish the game. This one didn't feel like it was as big as the first game. Uh, I think after my first playthrough, I think my second one took me, and this was with all the enemies invisible, so it was significantly harder. It took me like 58 minutes to beat the entire game, including all the optional areas. It, yes. Yeah, it was pretty short. I think the first one took me like two hours, and then it was it was sub an hour for, I think I did two other playthroughs. I haven't quite gotten all the outfits, which is something I like to do in this. Even though there's no there's no real need to do that, I just like doing it to do it. Um, I haven't quite 100%ed it yet. Uh, however, there there is one thing, even though this game is shorter than the first one, it has more variety and location than the original one. The original one, it all took place in Clea's home. You know, it was on different levels of the home. It was in the garden of the home, but it was all the home. So lots of it looked fairly similar. This one, you start off in a house and then you go into this uh, a waypoint, effectively, I guess, where multiple dimensions converge. And then each one is a completely different area. There's like an evil realm. There's one for the arcane and there's another one that I forgot what it was already. And they all have completely different designs for everything inside it. They're completely different color coordination, completely different levels, which is really interesting because the first game, nothing really felt unique in the level design because they were all, you know, one house. So it'd be weird if suddenly, Oh, completely new design for just this floor for no reason. So that that's something that I really liked was just the variety of location, even if every location is really fast to go through. <laughs> um, it well. did. It also, it did give a, a different gameplay uh, to it near in all the optional areas. And at the end, instead of running away from enemies, you actually pull them close to you so you can, uh, dispel them or something. It just gets poof, gets rid of them instead of having to run away from them the entire time, which is really cool. I really liked that. And it was just a new way, a, a new bit of gameplay type. That's pretty much all I have to say about the game. Cool. Well, 15 bucks. What do you think of Clea 2? I'm all for it. I think these games are, are fun. I, I like them. Well, cool. works for me. All right, one final game to talk about tonight is called Hell Breachers, developed by Omega Core and Radalike Games, published by East Asia Soft, released March 24th on Xbox One, Series X and S, PS4, PS5, and Switch for $4.99. Retro-styled action platforming gets a modern upgrade with robust character creation and RPG progression. This is, this is adventuring done your way. Whether you prefer straightforward melee, range combat, or spell weaving, you're free to tackle Hell Breachers' deadly depths with different strategies every time. Cole, tell us about Hell Breachers. I am a diehard shooter, and I just like to be able to jump and shoot things. And it let me do that, and I'm not mad about it. And I did it with a redhead, and I'm even happier about that. Uh, I do think the game could benefit from giving you a little more explanation on how the different characters like play out. Um, there are little summaries under them as you're choosing them, but I still didn't like realize how that was going to affect how I was playing. And I just kind of dumb luck happened into a build I liked. And at that point I was just like, well, I'm just going to beat it from here. <laughs> and I did, and I was okay with it. Um, there are there are a few different options for the life of me 
I don't remember every detail because I'm going to be honest with you. I played this several days ago and I've played a lot since then. And I forgot I even played this until you mentioned it. Oh, <laughs> and I feel bad. Like I had to go like look at it and go, what was that one again? It's been a busy week and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but on the bright side, that means I don't have any major complaints because I was <laughs> like, hey, I just blasted through it and had a good time. With it enough that I can't remember anything standing out, making me go, oh, fuck, that was terrible. I was like, no, I just kind of lucked into a build I liked, and I jumped around and shot things, and I was pretty happy with it. And that's not a bad thing. <laughs> like, sometimes sometimes you just want one of those games that you play mindlessly at 2 a.m. and then forget you played, you know? Yeah. It, See, it was- I, I played this one as well, and I just I didn't really feel it that much i thought the movement was clunky the collision was clunky clunky. i will admit to that the movement was clunky but it was just one of those like i didn't mind because i was just blasting through it no i can agree that it's it's a good mindless game i Uh just i think there's there's technical issues that hold it back from being something really good where it had a lot of potential it just, it, I think it fell short a little bit. Even it, it's a five dollar game, so I feel like I'm nitpicking here. Yeah, I think that was probably part of what affected it for me. Like when I looked at it on the store, it was three ninety nine, and I was like, "Yeah, I played that for three ninety nine. I'm cool with it." You know, so I was yeah. like, "It has its issues, but it's also five bucks." And how annoyed am I at those, at the five? Like, if if you handed me that and was like, this is a $10 game, I'm going to be like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> 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 but for five bucks, I can go, eh, I can live with some, some quality of life shit. Yeah, well, five bucks on it, what do you say? Eh, fuck it, why not? I can live with some quality of life shit. <laughs> Works for me. Yeah. All right, well, that is it for this episode Made it through another one. Uh, Ian, thanks for being here, hanging out with us. Aki, thanks for being here, hanging out. I guess we'll thank Jacob, too, might as well, since he was here. Fuck him. (laughs) Yeah, but I'm the most important. It's fine. You can ignore the rest of them. Nah, fuck you, too. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all are wonderful. Does anyone have any final words to end the show? Actually, we'll give it to Ian, since he's the guest. Ian, do you have any final... No, fuck all y'all. I'm out. Fuck this shit, I'm out. (laughs) Yeah. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna pack my stuff and leave. leave. Excuse me, please. Yes. Um, yes. yes. Let's see. Do I have any fun? Well, I'll just I'll just do my usual uh, stream sign off. Uh, for all for all of you out in uh, SML land, stay positive, stay awesome, stay classy, and stay safe. Or at least try to. Mm-hmm.